If you've been playing Sea of Thieves for a while, chances are that you have at least heard of the Fort of the Damned. What's unique about that place is that it houses a world event that can be triggered by players rather than spawning at random. Now what if I told you that there was another way to summon a boss that didn't involve said Fort of the Damned? Are you surprised? Because I definitely was. Turns out that in order to get to the shores of gold, we had to defeat one vicious Captain Grey Marrow. Except that we couldn't just roll up to the Fort of the Damned and do it there. This involved a whole process of tracking down disguises, getting in information and finding ancient relics in order to force him onto the mortal plane. And trust me when I say that, this Captain Grey Marrow took a lot more to defeat than the puny ghost version at the FOTD. We had a long way ahead of us, so we were keen to get that show on the road, though much to our surprise, to get this party started, we had to do the one thing that we usually try to avoid. <laughs> Uh, you guys are not gonna like to hear this. So we gotta die for the next part. <laughs> yeah, nothing quite like trying our darndest to survive the trap maker just to be told to off ourselves in order to make more progress. Thankfully, dying is what we do best, so we collectively blunderbound ourselves onto the Sea of the Damned. This is usually where I would give you a narrative rundown of why we have to do the things we're about to do, but much to our misfortune, this tall tale was bugged. Not a great way to start our mission. Both of my crewmates had to leave the game for me to be able to start the tall tale, and that also meant that that I was the only one who got to listen to the ferryman's ramblings. So, remember how we saved the souls of George and Rose from eternal torment? Yeah, turns out our soul-saving reputation precedes us because the ferryman wants us to do something similar. George was not the only one stuffed into an inanimate object, so we had to go and find the souls of the crew of the Morning Star to free them as well. Wait, what does that have to do with us trying to summon Grey Marrow? Right, Grey Marrow was the weirdo who taught Briggsy how to do the soul stuffing in the first place, so it is reasonable to assume that finding their souls is going to help help us track him down to take his infinity stone. With that many steps to our goal, I was fairly certain that Rare was not gonna try to pad the content out with a bunch of sailing, but unfortunately for me... Oh my god, guys, that's the other end of the map. Let's go! Like, literally, it's northeast at the other end of the map. Boy, howdy, was I ever glad about being on a brigantine. The journey was far, but the wind was in our favor, allowing us to make haste towards our first destination, Marauder's Arch. Technically speaking, the crew of the Morningstar found their demise at Kraken's Fall, but we had to come here first to obtain an item that would help us locate their souls. I really wish we could have just hired the Order of Souls to do the dirty work for us, but well, it was all hands on deck, nasty as it felt, to dig up the ferryman's physical body. I wasn't excited about it, but he gave me permission, and to do what he asked of us, we definitely need the magical lantern that he was buried with. One trip into Crosswind later, and we were ready to begin our first day as Phantom Detectives, except that combat was not part of the job description. Oh, immediately found something. Oh, hey. Uh... We should probably do something about that. And do something we did. Trying to split our attention as effectively as possible, I continued uncovering clues to find out what happened to the crew of the Morningstar, while Birdie went to take care of the skeleton with Brandon staying on the ship. Not to look after it or anything, but as punishment for killing us on purpose during the Trapmaker Gauntlet. But only because one has a plan does not mean that one can execute it. You guys gonna take care of that? Yeah, I'm almost there. Uh, I have to like go down and then back up to get to it. There's like no straight path to him. All right, Cliff, where are you? Follow my voice. I don't know where you are. I mean, neither do I. I'm just following footsteps. This might kill me. It did. I don't know if I'm anywhere near you. No, you're not. Good luck. Yep, this was going about as well as I had expected it to. Alas, we had achieved our goals with some amount of difficulty involved, the skeleton was defeated, and me following the footsteps led to more clues. Grey Marrow was not a romantic type because instead of using a pendant, he just stuffed the souls of his victims into crude boxes while telling his minions to throw the key away. But thanks to the ferryman's magical lantern, I could retrace those steps in order to get my hands on that which was never meant to be found. Though in my infinite wisdom, I had leapt off the mountaintop without considering the location of the box, corresponding to the ski. I was hoping Birdie would make just as much progress as me, seeing as how we had to find and save a total of three souls, but he beckoned me over to help him solve his part of the mystery. There's something here, look. Maybe there's a drag mark? Let's follow the drag marks, maybe that's where they brought the, the chest. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go, okay. Okay, yeah, now we're going somewhere. That's two different... All right. okay, I'm gonna leave the key here so we can follow the two different paths. I'll go left, you go right? Oh, okay. I found a second key? Okay. 
I found the chest. Oh, nice. It's as I like to say, two idiots are better than one. With the first key and chest combo taken care of, and that soul having been freed, Birdie could now help me with my missing chest to make that too. Turns out that the chest, just like the key I found before, was not atop the mountain. And after a bit of searching, the second duo would be reunited as well. I gotta say that this process was not anywhere near as involved as all this voodoo magic to break the curse. All we had to do was open the box and give them a pat on the back to send them to the ferryman. We were making great progress and only had one more crew member to go before we could finally leave this place. And dang, he'd definitely get the short end of the stick when it comes to their means of execution. Oh yeah, did I mention yet that freeing their souls always gave us some really awkward voice lines that felt like they came out of nowhere? Yeah, as you can hear, voices. Bit of a weird artistic choice there. I'd much prefer to have a bit of a face-to-face -face with the people we saved, but whatever. We had fulfilled our end of the bargain, so it was time to return to the ferryman and claim our payment. Even more baffingly, the people we saved were waiting for us at the Ferry of the Damned, so there really was no reason why we had to listen to disembodied voices before. Now, this is where it gets really funny, because the crew of the Morning Star were like, hey, thanks for saving us. By the way, we have no clue where you can find Grey Marrow. But just as we were about to stuff them back into the boxes, they told us that, in life, they knew somebody who might be able to help us out. Unfortunately, these people are not gonna tell us anything unless they think we are the crew of the Morning Star, which means we had to find out where they sank and hope that they had a change of clothes on that shipwreck that survived. Had I known it takes this many steps to summon Grey Marrow, chances are I would not have gotten out of bed in the first place. But alas, no amount of complaining is gonna make our situation better, so onward we went towards Dagger Tooth Outpost. Hey, wanna know what's even funnier than Rare sending us to the worst outpost in the entire game? Game, the tall tale still being bugged. I can't vote for it! Oh. God. I started to feel like Birdie was just making that up so he wouldn't have to listen to all the exposition that this NPC was about to throw at us. The lady was giving us a bit of a rundown about why we should be scared of Grey Marrow, and I mean, I don't remember asking for her opinion. Anyway, we were one step closer to summoning the big guy himself, with our next destination being Boulder Key. I mean, K. K. Key. It's K. It says K, it should be pronounced K. It's spelled in ye old English. Well, ye old English can suck one, because it says K, not key. Boulder K, let's go. Boulder Key, let's go. I'm gonna call it Boulder Koi just to be different. And as such, onward we went towards Boulder Koi. We arrived in the middle of the night to the tune of a whole bunch of phantoms fighting a skelly captain, and fortunately for us, said captain gave us a map which allowed us to dig up a stronghold gunpowder keg. These things deal a ton of damage, meaning it is the perfect weapon to use against Grey Marrow. But for now, we had to dive down to the shipwreck to find some clues as to the whereabouts of our cosplay. Said cosplay was not actually on the ship at the time of sinking, allowing me to dig up a completely dry set of clothing from the island itself. We were dressed up for the part and ready to uncover how the heck we can finally summon Grey Marrow. Though unlike the actual crew of the Morning Star, we intended to be prepared. Of course these idiots couldn't beat him because they didn't bring any Disney sticks. Thankfully, there was a treasury not too far away from Boulder Koi, meaning we could go and stock up in no time at all. Though as things would have it, of course it was never meant to be that easy. Uh, alright guys, here we go. Oh, come on. Ah, perfectly timed. That nobody ever. We just got dressed for the occasion. Yeah, okay, way to mitigate our attempt to cheese your encounter rare. I don't mind Karen so much when I'm on a sloop, but fighting the brigantine version of the soon-to-be takoyaki was more of a pain in the butt than I had the nerve to deal with. Especially when that stupid thing started to yeep me across the map. Of course, I heroically kept fighting to defeat the Kraken by any means possible. Though I could only hope that being drenched as well as covered in ink was not gonna take away from the quality of our cosplay. I'm convinced that there's one developer sitting at Rare HQ ready to press the summon AI enemies button whenever we are about to do anything worthwhile. Because the Kraken had literally turned us around to face us away from the shrine. But naturally, that was never going to stop us from stocking up on Disney sticks anyway, which, including the Kraken fight, has been enough of a distraction for us to forget why we were on this mission in the first place. What is the next step anyway? Where are we going? Uh, Sanctuary Outpost. We gotta fool some tavern keep into believing we're from the Morning Star. So we have to push E and then they're gonna tell us everything we want to know anyway. Yep, and that's more exposition, I guess. Now you might believe that, in light of our snarky comments, we had seen through the formula of this tall tale, but in a twist that surprised even us, Rare did not deliver on our expectations. Does she not have voiced dialogue, or are we doing something wrong? Nope, she sure don't. We dressed up for this? There's not even... 
dialogue? Yeah, it turns out that none of the people we had to squeeze for information had voiced dialogue at all. Dialogue that didn't even make sense because there's no such thing as an island called Sinking Cove. Okay, at that stage, with how many bugs we had already encountered, I was not convinced that this is how that was meant to go. So on to Rare Thief I went to confirm that we were still on the right track. And we were, though to understand why I dreaded the next part of our tall tale, you're going to need a behind the scenes glance. You see, I've been trying to learn Japanese for the past four months, and among the myriad of things to complain about, the one thing I absolutely hate with a passion is one of the three scripts they use. Kanji. Hiragana is something along the lines of our basic alphabet. Katakana is the same thing but edgy, and Kanji is what happens when you let old people decide that young people have to suffer as much as them. It's like the ancient Chinese version of Zoomers communicating in emojis. Back to our problem at hand. We had to defeat Grey Marrow's minions who would then give us his orders, which had been written in the Sea of Thieves version of Kanji. Except they actually make more sense than Kanji. So with a screenshot of the translation page on one monitor and the book on the other, I began translating this nonsense. Captain Skull from Kraken, from Rock, Kraken Rock, face, Kraken Rock face. Yeah, that's about how I sound speaking Japanese as well. But anyway, eventually all that stuff would translate into a guide on how to find the first relic. I also had the epiphany about the NPC trying to send us to Sinking Cove. It was a combination of the two destinations, Cannon Cove and Sunken Grove. At that point, we had been at this tall tale for hours, was looking like absolute clowns, and you can be sure that our patience was growing thin. So we went and slaughtered the next minion before going for another round of translating. And finally, we completed our laundry list. But it gets better because not only only did this tall tale start at the worst outpost in the game, it was supposed to end at the worst island in the game as well. Old Faithful Isle was home to one of the abandoned skeleton fortresses where we could conduct the summoning ritual, meaning all we had to do now was get our Disney sticks in position before calling upon the Hour of Twilight. You down for another behind the scenes glance? I figured I could use the time the boys took to move the Disney sticks to set up a cool thumbnail, but unfortunately we hadn't encountered enough bugs just yet. Is the ladder? Where? Yeah, on me. Or I'm not climbing it right now. Uh, I don't mean to alarm you guys, but the chalice disappeared. Certified not good moment. This better not be how we get reared today. In my attempt to stage a thumbnail, Rare decided to simply swallow one of the artifacts we needed to complete our tall tale. Panic was written all over us as we scrambled to find the chalice, but there was nothing, not even a glint. But don't despair, for this was still within expected tolerances. That's right, my friends, because it is current year, and Rare has bestowed upon us the magic of checkpoints we could simply flip the tall tail and get our items restored. Oh, right. thank the lord they're back. Oh, 900 IQ, let's go. Alright, good job, man. Uh, grab the shallows. Can you believe? Checkpoints weren't always a thing for Tolltales. Bro, I can't imagine. Unfortunately for us, the story didn't end there, because as much as Rare giveth, Rare very readily takes away. Wait. Um, they changed our location. Oh, we gotta go somewhere else? Can we just keep flipping it until we get the same one again? Oh, let's try. And so we went, flipping the tall tale time and time and time again. It took us so long to get the correct location that by the time we had it, the island was repopulated with a bunch of AI enemies. But at last, we could finally place the artifacts on the altar and summon Greymarrow to beat the ever-living snot out of him once he shows up. Because no boss fight will be complete without the boss spending an extended period of time taunting you whilst not being attackable. At that stage, let me mention that our record for killing his ghostly version at the Fort of the Damned was 90 three seconds. And let me also add a spoiler in that this fight took a lot longer. A lot longer. Not only that, but he also immediately started spamming area of effect attacks, which blew up our stronghold gunpowder keg, which up until that point, we had kind of forgotten existed. Now I wish I could splice together some kind of epic narrative, but I mean, it's a boss fight in Sea of Thieves. The dude had a ton of HP, kept summoning minions for us to deal with, and continued to spam a full mentioned AoE move. And after a painfully drawn out fight in which we dumped truck loads of damage, Damage into him. Yes. Easy. We finally got it. The final infinity stone. <sighs> God. It's been a long way, boys. We had done it. We defeated Captain Grey Marrow, and all we had to do now was deliver the stone to the shipwright so that she could finish our Shroud Breaker. Meaning we finally reached the end game. You said Morrow's Peak. Yep. You know what that means, boys? Next week, onto the shores of gold. Let's go.